that um, people will understand that certainly with regard to the federal government that we looked at uh, the facts, looked at the law, uh, had to deal with that, that high standard and came to an appropriate conclusion when we, when we do that. All right. That's, uh, of course, the Attorney General. And joining me once again is Dr. Alveda King, civil rights activist, niece of the late Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., and, of course, uh, Restore the Dream 2014 is her uh, undertaking. But I, I, I want to ask you about, uh, Ferguson, you've been very involved. You're going back in a couple of days uh, with the New York Times story on Saturday that leaked some of the grand jury testimony. Uh, also said, according to government officials, there'll be no civil rights case. Uh, the, pol the old police chief of Ferguson today said it doesn't look like there'll be an indictment. Uh, the governor today of Missouri said some things that, that um, I think are designed to also calm things down in advance of no indictment. What do you think will happen if there's no indictment? I am in serious and intense prayer for justice. And the parents, of course, are still grieving and they do need some type of restitution. African Americans across this nation, uh, we're just kind of waiting, holding our breaths. And so I'm praying that there will be some serious decisions, but some fair and just decisions to simply blanketly say no civil rights case, no indictment, and it's just too bad. These, th there are too many of these occurrences, so some things are going to have to be redesigned in America. I am for nonviolence, and that is not existing so much in our uh, law enforcement systems. They are just trained to eliminate a target. Don't think about a human being. Eliminate a target. So they're going to have to be some changes. And I'll be praying with some leaders this week in Ferguson. But if, if, if in fact, the cop was in fear for his life, if, in fact, Michael Brown, who we saw in the video before he ran into the cop, pushed twice a very small man while he took cigars that didn't belong to him and carried that attitude towards the cop. And in fact, if we're, as we're hearing, struggled with him in the car, the gun went off twice, there was Michael Brown's blood on the cop, on the gun, the cop was injured during the struggle. I mean, you know, a cop has a right to defend himself as well. Well, we have to re-examine what defense means, what uh, a fair amount of force is, and I think all of that must be re-examined. So you don't think seriously. cops have a right to shoot to kill if they feel that either their lives are in danger or the life of the public is in danger? They don't have a right I to shoot to kill? I have many friends who are law enforcement officers, many men, women of various ethnicities, so I do believe that there's a responsibility of a law enforcement officer to defend him or herself. I certainly do, but we have to make sure that that is what happens. Right, sure. Well, of course, and that's what the courts are for and all. Let me, let me ask you, um, the, the, um, this Ebola situation, there are claims on the left where people call, say, close the borders. You know, the African countries are closing the borders, you know, to, to, to the uh, Western African countries, uh, Kenya, others, a whole bunch, 28 countries. I, is it, would it be racist if we close the borders to those countries affected by Ebola? And do you favor closing our borders to them? As one who's been to the borders recently, I believe that the borders should be supervised, managed, and closed until America is strong again. We're not strong enough to help others who are coming. You know, give well, us your time. I'm not talking about Mexico. I know Coretta Scott I said, King. but borders, yeah, period. Yeah, border, period. But period. I mean, in reference to Ebola and the yeah. African nations, do you yeah. believe that would be racist in any way to, claim, to close those borders? It would not be racist. It would be wise to temporarily, not permanently, not to uh, discriminate against any nation ever but just wisely to assess what's going on. I think that would be helpful. And you, you talk about, you told me that during the break, I don't want to tell tells out of school because if it's on record, but you, you told me something Coretta Scott King had said about uh, our borders, I guess our uh, southern borders and all borders. So why don't you talk, uh, re relay that? Well, during her lifetime, she felt as though we need to take care of the domestic issues first, make sure we're well educated, having jobs and good health care and places to live. And then once we're able to do that, then we can reach out and help others. But until we're strong ourselves, how much help can we offer? Yeah, and if we're going to legalize by executive order 20 million people or so, while there are so many people in all communities out of work. Americans are not working. Right, right. Yeah. It's, they're the ones who are going to suffer. So great to see you. Thank you. It's, uh, it is Restore the Dream 214. 2014.com. Okay. Yeah. Dr. Alveda King, I look forward to our next uh, get together. Thank you. And uh, we are coming back, folks. The next segment, you know it, you love it, you got to have it. It's another Gimme Five, if you keep it where it is, right here on Newsmax Television. <laughs>